Actress Molly Ringwald was one of the biggest stars of the 80s, thanks in large part to her collaborative relationship with filmmaker John Hughes in movies like The Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink, and of course, Sixteen Candles. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. By the end of that decade, teenage girls all around North America wanted to be Molly Ringwald themselves. Now more than 30 years later, many of her former fans would still like to be experiencing her city lifestyle that included living in Paris throughout much of the 1990s, while also owning a stunning New York City co-op. Property records are somewhat vague as to just when Molly originally purchased her longtime home in the Big Apple, but the general consensus is that she snagged the two bedroom and one and a half bathroom duplex apartment sometime before 2004 upon her return to America after living abroad. Located in the Renwick Triangle on East 10th Street in the heart of St. Mark's Historic District, this lovely co-op spans the top two floors of a five-story house. It was originally constructed in 1858 by architect James Renwick Jr., the same man who designed St. Patrick's Cathedral, Grace Church, and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. What makes this home the very perfect place to start your own breakfast club, though? Well, I'm glad you asked. Highlights of this chic space include 10 foot tall ceilings with exposed wood beams as well as a carved marble fireplace that anchors the stunning living room. Then there's the kitchen with its utilitarian stainless steel countertops. Yes, that's countertops, not just appliances. As well as vintage range in this south facing even space with four windows that allow for tons of light. Elsewhere on the main floor and located just off a short hall that links the living room to the kitchen is the unit's half bathroom, one that could be converted into a larger washroom if needed. Upstairs you'll discover the co-op's two bedrooms, a larger one of which boasts yet another carved marble fireplace and an exposed brick wall. Both of these rooms share a small bathroom that's been lined floor to ceiling with brick shaped beige stone tiles. The primary selling point of this home however is its private rooftop terrace that offers city views overlooking the Chrysler Building, One World Trade Center, and the nearby gothic beauty of Grace Church on Lower Broadway. After owning this home for close to a dozen years, Molly would eventually decide to uproot herself from New York City, listing this property for $1.795 million. After two months on the open market, Molly would successfully sell her former home for more or less what she was asking, $1.7 million. The new owner then became Alexei Lubomirski, an accomplished fashion photographer who also just so happens to be a Polish prince. As for Molly, well, apparently she and her husband, writer Panyo Giannopoulos, had in the past opted to rent the majority of their homes for most of their adult lives in Santa Monica, California. According to sources, their plan was to return to the West Coast and continue doing just that. But as for where she lives specifically right now, that's anyone's guess. That being said, there is one last home for us to take a look at that has some very specific and unshakable ties to Molly Ringwald. Yes, I'm talking about the real world house that she shot a large portion of 16 candles inside of, a property that was recently up for sale itself. If you grew up in the 1980s, then there's almost no way you don't remember the hit films of John Hughes. Weird Science, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, he was easily one of the most accomplished filmmakers of the decade and produced even more hits than he directed. But few of his films resonated with audiences quite as much as the smash hit 16 Candles. One of the most popular coming of age films ever made, 16 Candles revolves around the lovesick Samantha Baker, played by Molly Ringwald, who struggles to get through her 16th birthday when it winds up getting overshadowed by her older sister's wedding. Thanks for getting Mandy's back. Thanks for coming over. 
A large part of this film was actually shot inside a house on Payne Street in Evanston, Illinois, and that location left nearly as big of an impression on audiences as Ringwald's performance would. For starters, take a look at that brick exterior. I'll tell you this, they don't make them like that anymore. And better yet, that red brick facade has remained largely unchanged over the past three decades. Of course, the interior of this home has stepped up its game over the years, sporting a far more elegant and sophisticated look now than it ever did before. Gone are those busy old-fashioned wallpapers that lined nearly every room in the movie, replaced with solid, contemporary colors ranging from light gray and taupe to cream and seafoam green. Meanwhile, the dated wheat-colored carpets that once coated the staircase and entire main level have been torn out to reveal hardwood floors. And when it comes to the layout, the front foyer leads directly into three main spaces. A living room on the left-hand side, a formal dining room to the right, as as well as the home's airy family room with its large picture windows, big screen TV, and plenty of storage space. The kitchen has been totally remodeled since the 80s and now it includes state-of-the-art appliances, custom cabinets, a cozy breakfast nook set against a chalkboard wall, and smooth granite counters. Heading on up, the wooden staircase will take you to the second floor, which houses five of the home's six bedrooms, including the master suite that offers ample space and comes complete with a walk-in closet, as well as a luxury bathroom. Continuing on up one more flight of stairs, there's the sixth and final bedroom, as well as what's now the home's media center, a space that was previously used in 16 Candles as Sam's pink-clad iconic bedroom. All of that, and we've still got one more floor to check out because down in the basement you'll find a colossal rec room with a fireplace along with other mandatory utilities like storage and laundry. Last but not least the backyard comes fully equipped with a tiled patio, outdoor kitchen, a wood burning fireplace surrounded by an al fresco dining area and patio complete with an outdoor TV. Even without its Hollywood history the home would be the perfect place to raise a growing family. The only thing you're gonna need a sizable budget to claim it. After originally purchasing the property back in 2006, the home's owner and investment banker, Stephen Miles, listed the house in 2016 for $1.49 million. Over the next two years, the property would be on and off the market at a variety of price points, including as low as $1.19 million in December 2017. The property finally sold in June 2018 for $1.135 million. In other words, if this peek inside an iconic Hollywood setting has tempted you into one day owning the house yourself, then you should start saving your pennies right now. Or at the very least, next time it's your birthday, you know exactly what to wish for. Alright everyone, that is going to bring this Molly Ringwald house tour to a close. Thanks for watching, and before you head out, ask yourselves this question. If you could live in any real life house, it's been used in a Hollywood movie, which one would it be? Let me know what famous home you've always had your eye on and why in the comments down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications before you go. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat more and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!